song together.
want you to clap your hands. It's a New Year's celebration. And we worship our God because there's no one like him. Do I have a witness? Thank you, Jesus. Just wave your hand and say, Lord, I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Let us adore Him, kneel down before Him, worship and adore Him, oh, come, come let us adore Him, kneel down before Him. And adore him. His name is Emmanuel. God is with us. Yeah. 
yes we do. Clap your hands and bless them. Amen, somebody. Come on and clap your hands. We're going to go to the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many thank God for the praise and worship? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, today we're coming out of the book of Isaiah chapter 54. The book of Isaiah chapter 54. It is familiar. You've heard it before. And um, I know when the Lord dropped this in my spirit, I'm like, okay, well, the only place I know to go today is right here. And uh, it's the Lord's will. Amen. Isaiah chapter 54. And I just want to read uh, just uh, two or three verses. Are you there? Can I begin? Yes. Amen. And to our viewers, I'm sorry. To our viewers, Happy New Year. Happy 2024. Yeah. And we thank God for you. Now, if you already watched this on uh, Christian Life Development on this past Wednesday, you know that was our first online uh, meeting with you, our viewers, and Pastor Audrey and I. We extended Happy New Year's to you then. But if you missed us on Wednesday night, this is the first Sunday. I know I'm dating this. The first Sunday of January, the first Sunday of 2024. And I believe that God has a word for you today. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, beginning to read in verse 2, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and it reads, Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, mm -hmm, and spare no expense. Well, I know all the wives in here love that part. You want to tell your husband, the Bible says... That I can remodel the house and spare no expense. Then husbands, I want you to respond. But wisdom says. <laughs> wisdom says we're going to do this in parts and pieces. Amen. This might be a five-year project. But, it's <laughs> Amen. but we're not going to go broke and hurt ourselves financially. Just because you want a different couch. Come on, come on. Come <laughs> Am I prophesying? <laughs> <laughs> Two prophecies. Oh Lord, have mercy. All right, and and the uh, people say that's prophecy, and then the guilty folks just shut down. <laughs> All right. And again, verse two: Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your. I might be able to help you with that couch. I might be able to help you. You talk to me now. Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, and spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Lord, I, I should ask all y'all to read that. Because this has to be a word for us. Yes, not for your house, our house. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your, uh, your descendants will occupy other nations and uh, resettle the ruined cities. My God, my God. My God, let, let me just read verse four. Fear not, you will no longer live in shame. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, y'all quiet in here. Fear, this must be the 8 a.m. service. Amen. <laughs> Fear not, you will no longer live in shame. Don't be afraid. There is no more disgrace for you. Oh, come on. That's not shouting words. Y'all should be running in the folks just off of that. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of uh, widowhood. So there are so many things that God said. It's already. Good God Ooh, Almighty. Yeah, you, you hear it. You hear it. You hear it. It's not my topic. But why don't you tell three people it's already behind you? Yes. <laughs> it's already yes. done. Lord, help me to overcome. It's already done. Lord, help me to move forward. You're already moving. And you just look how far away you are already disconnected. You are no, things that were attached to you have lost their grip. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, how many people have been in here? I, I, I'm not going to preach long because I can only pour out when it comes back. But how many know right now there are so many times where you felt like, you know, I just don't know what's happening. I don't know what I should do, what turn I should make next. But how many know right now you can see a distance between what had a hold on you and where you are right now? Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell your neighbor, it's really not where I'm at right now. I'm not where I used to be. 
But where I'm at is progress. Now tell them, but where I'm going is vision. <laughs> so I don't just, so many of us, we get pleased and satisfied. We settle at progress. And we feel like, well, you see, I don't do that no more. I don't, I don't do that. We feel like we don't still need to improve. There is always room for you to know more. I like this. There's always room for you to do more, to see more, to believe for more. And why not ask for more? Why not? God, if I'm doing more, why shouldn't I ask you for more? Lord, if you bless me with this, but you told me to make room. So what I have now is not enough for the room I'm making. You told me to expand. You told me to enlarge. You told me to stretch. But I'm only talking to the New Year's Eve people. You should know that word right there should have bothered you. You told me to stretch and God I thank you because you are settling me in the stretch. You are strengthening me in the stretch. You are propelling me in the stretch. And you are allowing me to survive the pain and the whatever it goes through in the stretch. Do I have a witness right there? But here's the main thing. Here's the main thing you need to see in verse 2. And I know verse 2 is not the beginning of the chapter, but it's, we're going to refer back to something in verse 1. But verse 2, it says, enlarge your house, right? Yes. Build an addition. Yes. Now, and, and you already know, I'm sorry, Marcus, but you know I'm not talking about your natural home. Amen. Okay. Amen. Just want to make it, because I, I know, I know, because you're going to hold this message on your husband and say, but the man of God said all right, and he won't tell you what the man of this house said. See, that's where my limits stop. I can't, I can't be the man of your house. I'm here to be the man of God, but I, I'm not the man of your house. Amen. I hope my wife is watching this too. The man, the man of God, and the man of the house. The problem is, we like to say, I got in trouble with her recently. She saw something we're not even ready for yet. She saw us, I said, we're not even ready for you. And I saw her first, that's the problem. I said, oh, look at that. All I said was, look at that. I, that was, and that was, and she fell in love with it. Oh, I want that. And that's how I'm saying She said, I want that. And I'm like, she, and then she started taking pictures. And so here I, I said, you know it's not going to be here if you come back. That is too nice. That's too much of a statement. And and right now, it's not right now, you know. And um, she said, but I like. She started taking pictures, and that husband's heart got soft. I'm like, well, can you go half with me? She said, yeah, I could do that. She said, I can do half. I'm like, okay, all right. Well, by the time I went to pay for it, <laughs> by the time I went to pay for it, I didn't have her half. By the time I went to pay for it, I had to pull out my car and pay for the whole thing. And because we can, here's how seasons work. Because we can't use it now, it's what we're doing in the future. It, it, it don't make sense to you. It doesn't make sense. It, it's not going to make sense to you hear the whole testimony, which is not the time to tell now. But here the word of God says, enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, spread out your home, and spare no expense. How many of us are holding back from allowing God to take us to that next dimension of our walk with him? How many of us are holding back because we feel like, well, I'm good. I go to church faithfully. I give like I'm supposed to. But God is saying, that's what you need to do here for this. But what I need to do, can you, are y'all good? Because I, I got the wrong glass. These are readers, so everyone is like, fuck. So I want to ask, y'all don't look, I don't look the way y'all look to me, right? Okay, because with these, where you at? You know, I can't find my glass, so I have to pull up one of my old readers. But the thing, it's good for reading, but it's not good for speaking. But y'all here, right? Okay, all right. So the thing is, the reality of age, okay? What, what was that? <laughs> Sit that man down. What are you doing? <laughs> right. But the thing, we need, the thing we need to see 
is that God is doing, wants to do a work in your life. You do not want to hinder it because you got relaxed and comfortable with what he, watch this, with what he did to bring you to this point. Okay, only one person here. See, see, we get satisfied and settled because Lord, you brought me from that and you brought me to this. But look around you and say, oh, there's change already. Look, that means, I, that means you know, and, and in change, you don't occupy what you once had. Amen. In change, you don't look to do the same thing you once you used to do. When, there's, when there is change, you also have to change. Who, thought, who even thought about changing their seat to that? So don't talk, I'm ready for change, and you go right back to the same corner, right back to the same this. I sit behind his head. No, 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 no. What is change? So where do you change? The change means there must be a new flow, a new idea, a fresh vision, a fresh work. God, you're only changing things to get me motivated. Did I hear that word today? To get me motivated to catch on to something that you're ready to do with me now. Hallelujah. This is your year where God is not going to do in you what he's already done. Why, why should, uh, I heard the preacher preach on New Year's Eve. You don't pour new wine into old wineskins. Because that new wine is too potent for that old wineskin. You can't take that new material and just stitch it to some old, torn, ripped up cloth. Because the old cloth is going to cause that to rip. Why should we waste the value of something that's new on something that's had its time already? Oh my God, my God. Tell your neighbor right quick. I'm going to try to preach my notes here. But tell your neighbor right, and I'll preach quick because I'll preach this at another time. But I want you to really look at the person next to you and say, there is more for you to do. And there is more for you to have. But there's more for you to become. Lord, I wish somebody got that. So the first thing we see here in verse 2, he, the word from the Lord is that you enlarge. You see it? He says, enlarge your. Then he says, build. Enlarge. Build. Then he says, spread. And then he says, spare no expense. I, I look at, I just count the four things. Let's go down that list again because I don't think y'all got it. One, he said, enlarge. What's yours, right? Two, he said, you build. Yeah. Then he said, you have to spread. Yeah. Then he said, don't spare anything. You know what all of this is telling you? You have to take the first step. You got it. God is ready to do something in you. But all, oh God, I feel this. But all he is doing in you is giving you a word. Your word from the Lord is just the highlight. It is, oh, here we are. The word from the Lord is just the preview. Good God Almighty. All right, how many know when you go to a movie? Oh, don't y'all act like y'all old school holiness. How many know when you go to a movie theater and you're there to watch the movie? What's the first thing uh, that comes on the screen? Previews. And doing those previews, you're talking, you're getting your snacks, you're making, you're looking around to see if you recognize somebody. If you're on a date, you might be holding hands. Yep. Might be trying to sneak a little peck in there. <laughs> right? But on the preview, you're not really focusing because you came to see the feature. You didn't come to see the preview. The problem, Brent, is we need to get excited about previews. You got me in the back. We need to be excited about previews because the feature has already been done. And for some people, they've all, nowadays, with modern technology, some people already seen the, pre, uh, the uh, feature. Mm -hmm. Or you could go to 52nd Street or whatever street you go on and get your own bootleg copy. They better now, before you used to see, hear people coughing and munching and all that. But now you get all this all slanted and jacked up, you know, way in the back of the thing, hear people yelling and stuff. But <laughs> even the criminal element got sophisticated. But the point that we're trying to get you to see is that we overlook the previews because it's not happening now. 
we are so consumed with it happening right now that we don't really have the taste for what's still to come. We want it right now in the society. I'm gonna be finished. In the, in the society we live in have got our minds so jacked up that we live for everything now. We listen. We talk about oh, food don't taste the way it was, but when I was coming up, you know why? Because they weren't microwaving it. Yes. They didn't do things. They didn't cook things fast. It took time. It may have taken a real serious meal, may have taken most of the day just to get it right so that when you sat down, everything was tasty and you didn't have all the seasons that you have now. You had what you had, but for some reason, hot sauce didn't endure it at all. It just, it just survived through say, whatever, whenever they developed it, hot sauce just came in. And no matter how it runs up blood pressure and cause this, we still wear the hot sauce on my chips, hot sauce on my we were, I'm surprised when we had our dinner here that no one asked for hot sauce. Y'all know I was sitting there waiting to hear someone say, we just need some hot now and watch the next day. We want too much hot sauce. And I'm going to have the biggest one run around just pick them all up. But listen at this. You have, you are responsible for taking the first step. Do you understand that? It is, you don't understand that. You are responsible. You want God to do it. And God is saying, no, I'm giving you the preview. My word to you is the preview. You don't see it all. Preview. Y'all stuck on this. You don't see it all. But you see enough to make you want to see the thing. And that's what the word of God acts like. It's a preview. Lord, I wish I had a church in here that was ready to jump off of that. When God gives you a word, it don't mean for you to run ahead of the word. It just means that now let me get excited because I want to see all that God has to say to me. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1, the prophet said, I will climb into my high place, to my tower, and I will watch to see what he will say. You don't watch to hear. Two people understand. You do not watch to hear. You listen to hear, but you watch to see. And the prophet Habakkuk in Habakkuk chapter 2 said in verse 1 said this, I will first of all ascend to a higher level. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will get into the place where I'm responsible. That word keep coming up y'all. Where I'm responsible to see things. Where I'm responsible to see what's coming. You got to hear prophetically. Where I am responsible to see what I need to prepare for. Where I am responsible to see what I need to alert the people of. Yes. You have a responsibility, number one, to go higher and to know how to see. But when he says, I, but this time I'm not looking out for an enemy. I am watching for the word. I'm watching for the word. I will watch to see what he will say to me. Here we go. I'm not even on the notes, and I'm going to close this. But the thing you need to understand, he says, I will watch to see. What God will say to me. That simply confirms what uh, uh, what Isaiah said. When he said God will send his word. And his word will not return unto him void. It will accomplish everything he said it to do. So when Habakkuk said I will watch to see what he will say to me. He is watching for the word itself to come in action. He was watching for the word itself. Or if you're really locked into it, for the word himself to show up, good God Almighty. That means that God is ready to invade your now. God is ready to invade your atmosphere. God is ready to invade your possibility. God is ready to invade your thought process. God is ready to invade your dreams. And what he's doing, he's saying, I want you to prepare for what I'm about to fulfill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sorry to get my topic all late and wrong, but my topic is prepare for the greater. Look at someone else say, you have to prepare for the greater. No, 
y'all, y'all, no, you're not saying it like you like you really commanded somebody. Tell them prepare for the greater. Yeah, you want that new, get ready for it. You want that expansion, get ready for it. You want to burst at the seams, get ready for it. You want a greater anointing on your life, get ready for it. But you're not gonna receive greater by, by thinking small. You're not gonna receive greater by not looking for something bigger. Hallelujah. I told you, I told you, and I'm probably gonna leave it right here. You have to take the first step. You have to take the first step. You can't sit there and say, well, when the, and see, I grew up with people. I've heard people, even older than me, well, if the Lord want to heal me, he will. Huh? Well, when the Lord wants to heal, heal me, he will. Uh-huh. And, and that kind of talk talked you out of your healing. Say it. Say it. Because that's not even faith. See, we think that's faith. See, when the Lord wants to heal me, he'll do it. That's not faith. Because you will see, the Bible says, in the book of Isaiah, the Bible says, God said, command you, me, the work of my hands. And, and that's King James, command ye, me, the work of my hands. In other words, I've made you, and if you want me to do something for you, then I want you to speak it to me. I don't need your permission to do it. I just need to know that you know I can do it, and you want me to do more. Y'all don't hear that. God wants to do more in you. God wants to do more through you. God wants to do more for you. But are you saying, God, do it? Oh, I got quiet up in here. Lord, they loud on Wednesday night. Listen, you have to know right now that, God, I am not going to hold back from what you want to do in my life. I may not see it all at this dimension. That is why I got to climb higher. I have to look above my circumstance. I have to look beyond what I'm going through. I have to look beyond the doctor's report. I have to look beyond the banker's report. I have to look beyond the credit report. God, I am believing you because you told me that you're going to do something awesome in my life. Oh, we are those witnesses right there. If you know that God is ready to do something in you, I want you to holler as loud as you can. Say, God, I know you're ready, but God, you need to know I'm ready. Just say, God, I'm ready. Hallelujah. I'm ready for more. I'm ready for the next. I'm ready for better. But God is saying, if you're really ready, take the first step. Remember when Peter was out on the ship with the disciples and the storm came. I'm bringing this in. And the storm came up. And, and the Bible teaches us that Peter looked and he saw something out there walking on the water. Uh -huh. And, and he, had, he made these bold statements. I think they're bold statements. He says, Lord, if that's you. Now remember, uh, who started the conversation here? Because in one of the Gospels, the Bible says Jesus was walking, and it looked like he was going to walk right past them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was he so focused on that, that he didn't have to worry about saving them in the storm? Ah, never looked at that. Because what they didn't know is what he knew. Because you see me in the storm doing the impossible, you should not feel that the impossible won't be done for you. Come on. Amen. I'm working too hard. All right, so Peter says, Lord, if that's you. Now, remember, you're out. How many have ever been on a cruise or on a boat, all right? And you've been out there at night. That's where I'm going. You've been out there at night, right? And I'm not talking about where you're wading in the water. No. I'm talking about out in the deep, all right? And you're out there at night. Now, you've been on the cruise, correct? All right? So on the cruise, you have all these lights on the ship. Yeah. But imagine where they're at. They're not on the ship that's out there in the boat, not a ship. Mm -hmm. right, right. All right, you have levels right. to the ship you're on. And as much as you see above the water, there's that much. That much. Exactly. Yeah. There are levels beneath the water. That's where the staff, the entertainment, all of them. Wow. That's why you don't want it to them in the same level that your room is on. Or your cabin, excuse me, for y'all uh, world travelers. Your cabin, you know. But they're all down here in the, the bottom part of the ship. That's where their residence and all that is. But the point is this. Out on the water, you don't see anything. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nothing. You don't see anything. Because water reflects the sky. Mm -hmm. So we say the deep blue sea, but the sea isn't blue. Right, right. When you feel water in your glass at home, it's not blue. Right. It's only blue if the glass is blue. Right. But water is clear. Mm -hmm. 
right? It's transparent. And at night, it reflects. So at night, the water looks like the sky. The sky is dark. The water is dark. During the day, the sky is clear. Or the sky is blue. The water is. Uh huh. But it's just reflecting that. So at night, you have no light unless they have no lantern. But that's not light enough to see. How do they see Jesus walking on the water at night? In a storm. Uh -huh. Now maybe there's some flashes of lightning. But then you have to wait for the next flash. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? Look like somebody's out there walking. Well, how about we got to wait before another flash so we can see that? Because he's not standing in the same spot. He's still moving. But So whatever the circumstance. I'm just trying to get you to see the reality of it. Whatever the situation was. Peter says, Lord. Uh. That's not saying nothing to you. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't be looking for Jesus out on the water. But he says, Lord. He wouldn't be looking for Jesus out on the water in the storm. But he says, Lord, Lord, I wish y'all were. He, he's not, he wouldn't be looking for. He didn't say, let's get in the boat because I'm expecting God to show up. <laughs> around the fourth watch of the night. No, he didn't say that. He's, Jesus told him, let's go to the other side. Meet me over there. The disciples in the boat, the storm comes up. It's, I believe, the fourth watch of the night, the Bible teaches us. And while they're out there, the storm is there. And Peter recognizes, he recognizes, uh -huh. he recognizes Jesus. Mm, I preached a message years ago at Holy Temple, recognizing the master of the sacred storm. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all don't remember that. Recognizing the master of the sacred storm. So there are some storms you go through that God has already orchestrated. Because he's going to get the glory out of. He's going to reveal something about himself that you have not learned yet. Oh, somebody say, Lord, I'm ready. You come, on, come on, listen, man. We don't want to go through no storm. But I do want to know him at another level. I don't want to go through nothing horrific. But I do want to know what God can do. And the only way I can know it I, is not to hear you testify. There's some things I could go around. There's some things I could hold up and let it pass by. There's some things I could go over. Maybe I could tumble and go under it. But honey, as long as you live, you're going to learn that there's some things that you just have to go through. But somebody say, but I'm preparing myself for something greater. And I'm taking the first step. So Peter said, Lord, if that be you, then have me come out there to you. He thought if that wasn't you, he said, man, you must be a fool. Don't come out here. Jesus said, come on out here. Peter, you spoke first. And when Jesus said, come, Peter, you step first. Y'all yeah, yeah. listen to this thing. And that's all God is saying to you. He said, I'm not going to have you in a situation we have to walk on water. But I will tell you something that you're already familiar with. I want you to change your surroundings. I want you to change the folks you're with. I want you to change your mindset. I want you to change the way you see things. It's not a new year if you don't do things different. How many thank God for the word of God today? I'm going to stop because I'm going to preach this. But I'm going to preach this. But listen, I want you to know right now, greater is in your future. Yes. Greater yes. is on the horizon yes. of your forecast. Those of you that are watching us at home, yes. you need to shout in that house right now and start shouting the house and saying, I'm receiving greater. I am doing greater. I am understanding God greater. I am comprehending God greater. I am working for God greater. I wish I were, I'm going down the whole litany here. God, I'm going to be what you were happy to be, but greater. I'm going to be that greater member at the church. I'm, I'm going to preach greater. I'm going to give. Now I'm going to get quiet. I'm going to give greater. I'm going to believe greater. And if that's you, I want you to stand on your feet all over the sanctuary. And I want you to bless God. You're satisfied with me not even preaching this. But I want you to, if you know that greater is coming, give God a greater praise. Hallelujah. Come on, greater praise. What will happen if I just praise him more than what I normally do? What will 
what he do for me if I just get more energy in my praise, more effort in my praise. Lord, I wish that shot track was ready. What would God do if I just do something greater? What will he heal in my body if I believe greater? If I, Lord, if that's you telling me to praise you, then give me strength to praise you. Lord, if that's you telling me to trust you, I'm going to trust you. God, if that's you telling me no matter what the circumstance, believe what I told you. Then I'm going to believe. Come on, I want you to run to three people and tell them it's all about being greater. It's all about doing greater. It's all about a greater move of God. Hallelujah. It's all about greater. It's all about greater. Thank you, Jesus. Give God glory for the greater. For the big, you better get your praise. That's it. Come on.